There was an article published a few years back in the Journal of, Bio uh, Bi the Journal of Biology of Sex Differences. Uh, based on a, a study that they conducted, the research showed that there's literally a major difference in how men and women see the world. Um, here's what the article said. Guys' eyes are more sensitive to small details and moving objects, while women are more perceptive to color changes. Research found that the guys required a slightly longer wavelength of a color to experience the same shade as women, and the men were less able to tell the difference between hues. Uh, and I can testify that all of that is true. Um, every once in a while, Abby and I will disagree about colors. For example, what color is this? What color is this? Blue. Indigo, oh, very good. Um, now it's interesting that most of you said blue. Uh, how many of you think it's a shade? It's a, it's a shade. It's a shade of blue. The shade of blue. Like in, primarily, you would call that a blue. How many of you think that it's primarily like a shade of purple? These are the same color, <laughs> but maybe it's the difference of the TV screen. <laughs> so a few people have said it's a shade of purple. You see, people really do perceive and experience the world differently. I would, I would call it a shade of purple. Uh, Abby thinks it's a shade of blue. Um, people really do experience colors differently. And people experience the world differently. And it's not just men and women. Uh, if, if we can't even 100% agree about uh, this color, it's even more true for the enormous variety of people born and raised all over the world, whether different cultures and differences of worldviews and differences of what we think the goal of life even is to agree. So as we struggle oftentimes to see eye to eye, we would do well to remember that our blue really might be their purple. But the cool thing about this is that if we humble ourselves, giving each other room to see the world just a little bit differently, we might actually get a more complete picture. And this is all part of the process of becoming one. You see, all of creation will ultimately be made perfect in Christ. Ever since Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, the very earth has been groaning and longing to be made new. And I think that's a longing we all have. We, we don't like the idea of any injustice or evil remaining forever. Because if there's any rebellion against God in eternity, then God has not conquered all evil. But God promises that all things will be brought together in Christ. And that all things will be in subjection to Christ. I wanted to mention one more thing about Pando, the Pando Grove. And that's that it actually has been dying lately. They don't completely know why, but one theory is, is that it's just getting old. And even when the new trees pop up, they're not as strong as the as truly new trees planted from new seeds because they share the roots of the old trees. So the Pando Grove is slowly dying rather than growing. And the only way that we're going to grow as God's people is if we continually plant seeds of the gospel in the next generation. God's promise that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. And we can know that with complete and uh, complete confidence that that's the case. But the way, the way that the kingdom grows today is when we take a step of faith to share the gospel with everyone in our community and the world so that they would see the glory and goodness of God, place their faith in Jesus, and be saved. You see, in Christ, God is bringing together all things in perfect unity. And he invites us to be peacemakers who share the good news of the gospel with all.